Shares of Global Foundry is falling 9% today after the company projected quarterly revenue below expectations. For the quarter, uh, the chip maker reported a nearly 30% drop in revenue year over year in the smartphone market. We've heard that a lot. And losses in the PC segment, but more than doubled revenue for autos. Joining me here exclusively, Global Foundry CEO Tom Caulfield. Tom, thanks for coming in. Um, the quarter itself, solid, but as so many companies are, are having trouble with the guide and seeing what happens with demand in the back half of the year. Yeah, very good, John. First, thanks for having me. And I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to our team around the globe. Tough, challenging environment, delivering outstanding results for Global Foundry. So great job with that team. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here is uh, we entered the year as an industry thinking it was going to be a, a sharp second half recovery. And it's clear it'll be a much more muted. Now, we believe Q1's the low point and we will have modest increase in revenue going forward. But what we're focusing on is making sure we maintain our profitability. You talked about year-on-year -year revenue down. We were down $100 million in revenue year-on-year, 10% year, I mean, ten cents increase in EPS. That's performance through a down cycle. Okay, so what is the cause of the second half demand being less than expected? We've been talking about the consumer perhaps running out of steam, but we've also been talking about a consumer that's continuing to spend on services, if not goods. Is it that dynamic that's continuing to tilt more towards services and, and we're seeing the impact? Look, I think, think there's a certain amount of money they're going to spend and there's a certain amount you're going to spend when you think the environment is constructive or not. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get the uncertainty out of the economy. We need to make sure the debt ceiling gets lifted. You're talking about that all day today. You know, let's, let's prove to ourselves that the interest rates increases we made are going to start to take a, a hit on inflation so that we can come back down. And then we'll start to see, I think, spending everywhere by the consumer. You know, the other end of that is consumers never had a higher savings rate than they have today as well. Mm. So I think there's always, when there's always uncertainty, uh, you know, people will spend a little bit differently. A couple of years of being locked up in COVID, a lot more you know, free time to want to go travel and spend the money there. Longer term, looking through this, this is an industry that's going to double in the next 10 years. We, as an industry, and GF in particular, position ourselves to participate in a meaningful way in that growth. But I think the question is, how long do we have to wait until we get to that longer term? Right now, I mean, pipeline-wise, the setup for Q4, which is very important, seems pretty uncertain. Uh, what are you hearing about inventories? Yeah, I think that's, a, that's another great point. Um, the, 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 the Q4 is usually that strong, smart uh, mobile devices, handsets that you talk about. It was a mixed bag in Q1. As many companies brought inventory down as, and, and went up, they think it's about the normalized period. And now it's about how fast do you bleed off that inventory. I think if the highest volume application is handsets, and so their inventory built up a little bit longer, and it may take longer for that to bleed out. You know, we're planning our business. It's a little bit, we'll, we'll believe it when we see it, mm -hmm. that we, we think it's going to take a little bit longer for that inventory to, to bleed down. And that's why we're only projecting modest growth through the rest of this year. So w within that picture, how convincing is the China post-COVID recovery? How does that play into how long it's going to take to bleed down that inventory? No, I think that's a, a huge point. I think all of us expected a much steeper ramp of the China economy getting revved up. And probably a stimulus is going to be needed there to, to, to get that, uh, that economy to where the government there would like to see it go. And all of this puts how much pressure on this meeting that's happening right now at the White House that we got absolutely new, no news out of in that press spray between, you know, the president and McCarthy to not drag out this uncertainty? I think the, that's the, the absolute point here. There's already enough uncertainty with inflation and high interest rates. Let's not put uh, fuel on the fire. Let's get that done and start to create a bedrock for this economy to come back.